I'm talking through my photo to the camera, so don't mind me. What's up guys and welcome back. It's Matt and I've got such a cool photo outing plan for today. I'm here at the waterfalls at McCormick Creek State Park. That's Indiana's very first state park. I apologize for the noise. The, the waterfalls are very loud and I am wearing a microphone, but I've got a feeling that uh, a lot of that noise is gonna filter through into the video. I'm not here shooting by myself today. I've got a, a guide and a companion, uh, the, the wonderful Christopher Clark, who you may be following on Instagram if you're one of those hip new Instagram kids as photography and focus. He's a, a, a well uh, established and accomplished and well followed photographer here in Indiana. And he's gonna show me around a little bit. We'll have a, he's over here shooting the opposite side of the falls, which means I'm probably on the wrong side. But we'll have a chance to meet up with him later and maybe try to squeeze a few waterfall tips out of him because he's something of a waterfall guru. I'll talk you through my first shot really quickly. So uh, I'm trying something different today and being like a little thoughtful about my photography. So I've taken an approach, which was starting here uh, close to the waterfall and working my way back. Right, that way I, I make sure I've covered a good amount of ground and, and seen what this scene has to offer. And what attracted me to the first shot is these really cool rocks in the foreground you see here. There are all kinds of cool cracks and striations and patterns in the rocks. And where I'm from, way downstate in the rural, essentially floodplains of the river, there aren't a lot of rocks down there. So whenever I see rocks, I get excited and fascinated. So for this first shot, I've uh, foregrounded this uh, very dominant rock here and then just leading you into the waterfall. Oh, sorry about that. And then I'll show you the effect of the polarization really quickly. So this is uh, fully unpolarized and fully polarized. And I'll probably take a couple of shots uh, for different strengths of polarization so that I can play around with that later on the computer and decide which one I like best. So this is my first photo and we'll see where it goes from here. F11, ISO 100 for one thirteenth of a second. I gotta tell you, I did not expect to find this in Indiana. Okay, Chris is already working down the stream, so let's go catch up with him. So Chris has helped me get set up with my second shot by telling me an area to avoid because he tells me that if I go back to where I first wanted to go, there's a huge rock blocking the waterfall. It's a big advantage to coming to a location like this with someone with some familiarity to it. Is this about average height for the waterfall? Uh, yeah, I would say it's good height for the waterfall right now. Um, we haven't had a lot of rain this week. Uh, previous couple weeks we've had a lot of rain. Uh, it got pretty high. Water was a little murky. Right now I'd say it's a perfect height. Uh, probably four waterfall pictures. The spot that you chose right now is a really good spot. Uh, got great foreground interests. Um, the rocks, just, just that's one of the reasons I love coming here with all the rocks and, and all the foreground interests that you have with the waterfall that you can include with it. It just makes for great framing. Yeah. yeah I was just saying that about the rocks. It's like, uh, 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 you guys just heard me say it, but I'm always attracted to rocks because we don't have any where I live. The first so how long have you been coming here? Uh, I think this was probably the second waterfall I found out about. The uh, I think the first one was Cataract Falls. It's about 15 minutes north of here. Um, this one was the second one. I've been coming uh, about since about 2016, 2017, I think it is. Uh, pretty long time. Just love it here. Uh, it's nice down in this little gorge right here. Uh, it doesn't get hot in the summer. Uh, it, it can get pretty slippery uh, in the winter So and when it's raining too, so definitely be careful. Yeah. And it's like a pretty small park, so it probably didn't take you too long to get fairly familiarized with it. If you've been coming here for like five years, you probably know your way around pretty well. Yeah, the good thing about it is, is some people like a good hike with a good view. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a short hike with a better view. You're really only 30 seconds from the parking lot to get down to here, so it, it's not that hard uh, to get here. It's not necessarily wheelchair accessible, but it is a little bit of a downhill and a little bit of uphill, but it, there are steps that you will, will go up and down. Like I said, 30 seconds to a minute, you'll be able to hear the waterfall as soon as you pull into the parking lot. 
Yeah, and I see good handrail access on the steps too. The steps are literally just right here out of frame. So yeah, very good access to the site. So Indiana Waterfalls, is Indiana good for waterfalls? Uh, there's a lot of waterfalls. If you look up online for waterfalls, that was what I, the first thing I did is to look for waterfalls. You, you don't see them very often as far as if you're doing like Google searches and things like that. You really got to reach out to some people, other, other photographers out there to really find the good waterfalls. Uh, these two were, were listed online, but some of the other ones that are like there's one in bloomington that's a good one uh it's it's just in a local local park that's over there um there's one there's actually a couple at uh turkey run state park that not too many people know about uh that are pretty good ones uh but the water you have to have a pr pretty good amount of rain for them to you know be going a little bit uh, otherwise you know they're just going to be just little just little trickles. trickles yeah but this one looks pretty dependable and um, so this is this is the best waterfall in Indiana, right? Uh, that's subjective, depending on who you ask. Uh, I'll always, if anybody knows me, you'll probably know that I'm at Cataract Falls a lot. Uh, so Cataract Falls, the Upper Falls, and Lower Falls. Uh, I, that was the first waterfall I seen and first waterfall I fell in love with. Uh, largest waterfall by volume here in Indiana. Uh, are there better waterfalls in other states? Maybe that's subjective. It just depends on who you ask. But as far as you know, Indiana goes, I would probably put Cataract Falls first and put McCormick Creek second. And my Indianapolis viewers are constantly going on about Cataract Falls, so apparently it's a place that I need to check out at some point. And you have a uh, workshop coming up at this location, right? Yep, uh, the next workshop I have will be on uh, May 21st, Saturday, May 21st here at McCormick's Creek. I will be hosting another one for beginner and intermediate photographers, waterfall and landscape photography. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I'm sure he'll leave a link in the bio. Um, the next workshop will be coming up in June. I haven't set a date for it yet, but be on the lookout for that. Uh, but I'll announce, I will announce it on my website. And if you're one of the three people in Indiana who's not already following Chris on Instagram, he's Photography in Focus, and what are you on Facebook again? Uh, photography in Focus on Facebook as well. Photography in Focus, so uh, if you're one of those three people, Joe, John, and Jane, be sure to look Chris up. All right, we got to get back to shooting because uh, it's threatening to rain on us apparently. So I'll, I'll walk you, I I'm set up for my next shot, I'll walk you through it right now. Don't try this at home. So if you weren't a fan of uh, dry, hard foregrounds, this next one I think might suit your taste a little better. A nice, wet foreground right down by the falls here in this little area where the water is splashing around this boulder. You can see how I've got the shot composed. It's actually a really basic composition and everything's quite centered with the exception of the waterfall in the background. So the only path your eye is really gonna take is you know up the falls and maybe slightly to the right. But I think that's okay. It's my first time shooting here and, you know, I'll save the more in inventive compositions for later. Mostly I just want to show you guys this outstanding location. So before I take the shot, I'll tell you a little bit about the light today. Uh, it is overcast. The skies are actually quite gray. When we first arrived, there were just a few speckles of blue in the sky but those are completely gone. And as I mentioned when I was talking to Chris earlier, uh, it is forecast to rain within the next couple hours. So uh, an advantage of that is I'm not so tempted to be distracted by the sky and try to make a big uh, sky photo. You'll notice that this composition is quite bottom heavy. But what's really nice about the overcast lighting is that it's, it's actually fairly dark and I'm able to get some longer exposures on the water to, to capture the, uh, the effect of the emotion without having to use any extra filters. A second that's what I'm liking what's your best tip for waterfalls yeah give us a free one that's a great tip you said you can really magnify the waterfall in the background by using a longer focal length is that is that, is that
Okay, I think I, I might actually stay here in the park tonight, but uh, the shooting light's just about over, so Chris is gonna head out on me, just like you would. But I, I wanna thank you for coming out, for showing me around, you've been a huge help getting me some good photos. Sure. So, something we were just mentioning was, maybe if uh, Indiana photographers would be interested in doing a meetup this summer. Yeah, I was thinking about putting together something for the summer. Uh, it'd be cool just to meet and greet everybody. Just to see, uh, you know, meet all the other photographers that are out there. You know, it's we always see everybody's pictures and and always hear their stories whenever they're posting either on social media, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you post or anything like that. Um, it's always cool to you know meet the person behind the camera. Well, I can verify that's true. It's been really great meeting you today. Uh, thanks again. And uh, if you think an event like that would be interesting, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear some suggestions. Take it easy. Take it easy. So for the next two pieces of footage, I forgot to turn my microphone back on. Miraculously, in the years I've been making these videos, this is the first time I've done that. But what I'm saying here is that after Chris left, I went and reserved a spot at the campground, and now I'm setting back out to explore some of the areas of the park he recommended. And like, that's literally all I'm saying. I don't know why it's taken me so long to say that. And chew gum. Maybe I'm talking about the trees? I'm probably using some of those words I like to repeat a lot, like nice. So it's nice, 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 so nice, really nice, and great, 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 really great. And opportunity. Definitely an opportunity, 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 opportunity. There's another one I keep recycling as well. As well, and as well, and as well, and as well. But I can't remember what it is. In this segment, I say that I like this woods, but for some reason I'm saying it for a really long time. I'm being very descriptive. It's like I'm trying to paint a picture with my words, even though you can clearly see everything I'm describing in the video. Also the point of the video is to show you photographs I take of the things you can clearly see in the video. I'm rethinking my life. Well, against the odds, I didn't manage to get rained on yet, which is uh, quite an achievement considering I sat here and fussed over this composition for probably close to half an hour. I finally got it whittled down to something I like. Uh, there's a lot of playing with exposure speeds, the faster speeds that I was using close to the waterfall don't work very well here. And, um, and also there's a lot of uh, dead space here in the middle of the composition. And so I've sort of corrected that by half polarizing it so that it, there's a little bit of reflection on the top of the water and it fills a little bit of that negative space. I like the way the pictures turned out. Uh, some really interesting craggy trees here on the hillside and a splash of color out in the distance with some, some leaves hanging on to that tree from last year. Of course, in the foreground, the beautiful features of the creek running through. I'll grab this photo and I'm gonna try to do one more where I'm really attracted to this woodland scene behind me. It's about 40 minutes till sunset and the clouds are really rolling in now so the light is just about dead so I'm gonna call this uh, the last photo of the day just a nice quaint little flourish of detail really uh, really inspiring shot from a, an area that's really spoken to me and a nice wind down from a really enjoyable day of photography <laughs> <laughs>